Now here are the all categories of plastic is given, which is given in the plastic waste management rule of 2016. So under the plastic waste management rule 2016, the plastic are divided in these four categories. So the very first category which is provided under this rule is PET, that is polyethylene terephthalate. Now what is this polyethylene terephthalate? This polyethylene terephthalate that you can see here, the, poly, the type of polythene which is majorly used to measure plastic bottles, majorly uh, making of the plastic bottles. PET is commonly used in commercially sold water bottles. That is what? That is polyethylene terephthalate. Soft drink bottles, sports drinks bottles, and condiment bottles. So all those plastic made bottles are made up of the polyethylene terephthalate. Then we have the high density polyethylene that is known as PEHD. The small forms are also important here. PEHD or HDP, sometimes it is uh, written in some literature as well. This is high density polyethylene. It is commonly used in the milk and juice bottles, detergent bottles, shampoo bottles, grocery bags, and cereal works liners. For those, the high density polyethylene, the second number is used. Then we have the third number plastic that is the PVC, polyvinyl chloride. So these are the flexible or rigid and is used for the plumbing pipes. Mainly this is the use of the PVC to which the pipes are made. Clear for food packaging. And then we have the shrink wrap, plastic children's toys. <coughs> Sorry. Tablecloths, vinyl flooring, children's play mats or the blister packs such as the medicine packets. These all are made up of the polyvinyl chloride that is pvc the main work of pvc here is the plumbing pipe only the remaining are the extra work you can say then we have the low density polyethylene that is peld this low density polyethylene is used by the dry cleaning bags bread bags newspaper bags produce bags and the garbage bags as well as the paper milk cart uh, cartoons and the hot cold beverage cups all in these low density polyethylene is used then we have the polypropylene. Polypropylene is used to make the yogurt containers. Containers. Then we have the food containers, daily food containers, furniture, luggage, and winter clothing insulation. For that, polypropylene is used. Then polystyrene, also popular known as styrofoam. It is used for the cups, plates, then takeout containers, supermarket meat and the packing nuts. CD cassettes, these all are made up of the polystyrene. Then we have the bisphenol and A others, A and others. So bisphenol A, that is any plastic item not made from the above six plastic items. Those all are under this bisphenol A and others category. Together as the seven number plastic category, things like CDs, then we have the baby bottles, then we have the headlight lenses. These all are made from the other type of plastic categories that is the seven category or seventh category of the plastic so what you have to remember here you have to remember the numbers and the numbers associated with the which type of plastic and how many categories we have and majorly for what any kind of plastic is used that you have to remember from this particular slide and this is written under the category of this plastic waste management rule 2016. I have taken this screenshot from the guideline of this plastic waste management rule. This is directly from that particular guideline. So remember it carefully. Then we have to discuss about the recycling of the plastics. So for that biodegradable plastics are used. Biodegradable plastics means that plastic other than the compostable plastic, which undergoes complete degradation by the biological process under ambient environment, terrestrial or in water conditions in the specified time period without leaving any microplastics or visible distinguishable or toxic residue, which have adverse environmental impacts adhering to laid down standards of Bureau of Indian Standards, that is the BIS, that IS we have seen are certified by the Central Pollution Control Board. So this is the definition of the biodegradable plastic that is under the recycling of the plastic material. So when plastics are recycled, it is often important to separate them carefully by resin, type and color. Different resins have different melting points, so you cannot melt them all. 
suppose two types of plastic one you have ldp another one you have hdp both melting point is different the hdp is suppose melting at 60 degrees celsius while ldp is melting at only 35 degrees celsius so what would be the scenario you cannot just mix the both plastic and start melting down if you reach the temperature to 60 degrees celsius the ldp start burning and the hdp start melting at that point so that's why the mixture of plastic you cannot recycle first you have to classify these all plastics under the different categories with the hood of the same melting point and same boiling point then only you can use it or recycle it otherwise these plastics cannot be reformed that is the what it is saying into the new product some resin may not melt at all and some may have burned completely so that is the problem with this particular recycling of the plastic so that is a major problem i would say you have to very specifically select the plastics under the different category and you have to separate them then only you can recycle it mixture of plastics cannot be recycled so i hope this is uh, clear to you now so recycling these are the recycling of the materials that can be done the very first uh, type of the recycling which is provided here is the recycling of the glass so glass usually can be recycled 100% because glass is not getting harmed by any kind of activity you can say and 100% it is recyclable maybe uh, um, that uh, back side of the glass bottles you have seen such a type of recycled loop which is saying that throw this material in the dustbin and this can be used as a, a recyclable material or that material is made from the recycled glass so glass bottles can be melted down again remade over and over again without any product degradation so that's why the glass bottles are used very widely in the case of if the multiple times requirement is there and that can be again brought back from the customer to the manufacturer unit and again that can be melted and again used suppose this is broken also so then also no problem if it is completely broken then also no problem that can be melted again fully and remade over again so it is not having issues like plastic here so that is the main thing only thing is that the mixture of colors but, but once you melt it that color can be again removed from the glass and new color can be provided as well so that is the advantage of the using of the glass then we have aluminium recycling the aluminium canes so the most valuable material in the municipal solid waste program or recycling program is the aluminium canes that is the most valuable thing that you can get in the municipal solid waste biggest source is the soft drink and the beer cans second biggest source is durable and non durable goods for example home appliances or the furniture so these cans can be easily recycled and again made by again melting and the remade over over again so this type of scene you have seen in the aluminium games so this is called as the aluminium recycling type of mobius loop so that you can see so it is saying that this is recyclable product or this is made from the recycled product then other metals that can be classified into two categories all the other metals which is not glass and which is not the uh, aluminium cans so these are the non ferrous materials and the ferrous materials so non ferrous materials such as aluminium copper lead zinc and ferrous materials this contains iron mainly and here the interesting thing comes in the separation of these different materials the separation can be done by the magnetic separator so magnetic separator will just uh, contain the iron material with it and that can be taken out remaining all the materials cannot be separated with the help of magnetic separator so those all can be go to the other side so all the iron you will get from easily from the solid waste with the help of magnetic separator then there would be use of eddy current as well so eddy current again you can just remove the iron from the bulk of the or bunch of the solid waste because eddy current is also used for the separation of the conductor of the light so here we will pass the current if current is passing so that is a metal if it is blocking the passage of the current so it is a non conductor it is non metal you can say from the scenario 
the separation can be done by both either maybe uh, the magnetic separator or maybe eddy current so that is very widely used in the categorization of the waste a materials recovery facility here we have to start this new topic which is also called as mrf mrf is material recovery facilities so here what we will do we will take all the municipal solid waste we will categorize them and after categorization we will recover the materials there so that is the material recovery facility it is a key component of the residential and the commercial single stream recycling programs a uh, mrf receives commingled materials and uses a combination of equipment and manual labor to separate and densify materials in preparation for shipment downstream to recyclers to the particular recovered materials so what you can do you can just recover the materials here you can send those materials directly to the manufacturer or maybe to that person who is decomposing them or maybe reusing them or recycling them so this mrf facility this is receiving all the commingled materials means mixture of the materials and it is using a combination of the machines equipments manual labors separation or the separate density materials in the preparation of the categorization of the products here and that categorization of the different categories of products can be sent to the downstream downstream to the recyclers it means further to the recyclers who can reuse it as a raw material or maybe decompose it or whatever is right for that product so they are performing that so in the mrf mrf is that particular facility or plant you can say where you are categorizing the wastes so typical mrf is designed to receive old newspapers cardboards that have already been separated from the bottles plastic glass so this is the first thing they want in the mrf facility in the mrf facility two type of the wastes they can take one is containing all the newspaper cardboards biodegradable material and then biodegradable means not that uh, household uh, wastes that is coming from the house they don't taking that they will only take the municipal solid waste which is not containing any food material or not containing any kitchen waste and into that also they need the separated already separated material of the newspaper and cardboard separately and all other materials including the glass metals plastics all that in another bunch so that is plastic bottles glass etc already separated from the newspaper and cardboard because these are not biodegradable the newspaper and cardboards are biodegradable and that can be used as a raw material directly in the newspaper factory or cardboard factory so this not simply processing but it also helps in reducing contamination of the paper products from food and chemical waste so that is the good thing why moving that but suppose if any contaminant is present in bottle plastic glass so that can be absorbed by the newspaper and cardboard which we don't want so that's why in the mrf facility the very first thing they want is the separation of these newspapers and cardboards 